Good evening, everybody. Thank you for uh, your attendance at the Warrant Committee this evening. Um, uh, I will call the meeting to order as it is 7 o'clock and uh, ask for accept a motion to accept the minutes of the August 20th minutes, which you have received electronically. I move. Uh, one, just one change. Um, second, and then you can make a change. Right. I'll second. Okay. okay. Changes. On the, um, on the article, uh, uh, it's number H, I believe. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Eight. Okay. Um, I, I guess, first, it's, it's not clear because we're referencing Article 16 and 17. It's not clear which one we voted. We um, voted Article 16. Okay, but the minutes say 16 and 17. Okay, we have to change so that. We'll make it so clear. we'll amend it to read Article so 16 was approved. I, Article 17 we did not yeah. vote on. Right, correct. Yeah, it's just not You're clear. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. And, and, but it's my understanding from what the citizen told us that we didn't have to vote on 17 because 16 would supersede 17. No, don't, no, no don't that's not that. accurate. We have to we have to consider it, but we I'll get an opinion from John Flynn as to how we have to handle it. But we right. do have to report it because it was filed. Properly. I, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to handle it properly. Yeah. It'll likely get a not recommended, but thank you for that clarification. So with that clarification, we one did vote Article one, 16. One, oh, one, go ahead. Same yeah. article. Uh, yeah. I, I was I was not an abstention. I was in I was in a no on that. I'm sorry, you annulled that? I, I was so a no. he was a no rather oh. than an abstention. Yeah. Oh, okay. And if okay. Could, I'd just like to have the minutes reflect what happened. Reflect what well, the no, he said the, no. The, the, the no and, 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 yeah. and, uh, and that I was looking for further information. Okay. Right. Okay. We will have a chance to get further information. So just if anybody, on that one article. Just the one article. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We will have a chance to have further information. Uh, and if we need to reconsider, we can. But uh, the select board will be represented, or I guess the selectmen until the town meeting changes it, yep. uh, will come on the 5th. Um, it is the end of the summer and many people are still away. So with those two changes, uh, do we have any objection after this discussion? So as amended, uh, can we have a vote, please? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. Thank you very much. Um, before we go to considering the articles that we have before us, uh, Bob Hiss, who is the town meeting moderator, has come to say, Hello to us. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, thanks for a few minutes, oh, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, uh, welcome. All I wanted to do is really say I'd, I've spoken to um, some of the new members just uh, by phone over the last few months and wanted to come and uh, say hello in person and just offer a few thoughts. One, thank you all for serving. Um, when I talked to each of you, I thought you all had interesting backgrounds and have a unique contribution to go make, whether it's in education or public safety or, or legal or planning or town government, whatever it happens to be. Um, it could be uh, finance, et cetera. So I th thank you for spending all the time you're, you're going to spend um, on the town's uh, business coming up. Just a couple of thoughts uh, that I think I've shared individually with some of the folks. Um, having been a town meeting member and, and watched as the moderator, it's, I think you know this, town meeting uh, heavily, heavily relies on what you um, decide to recommend. And so what I appreciated as a town meeting member, and I think what they're looking for is, uh, I'll phrase it as healthy skepticism, which is um, you're going to, in many cases, vet these things on their behalf. Because I've rarely, I think only about 10% of the articles ever get amended. I've only seen one or two get voted down um, in a long time. So what you say carries an awful lot of weight. So in, in that regard, I mean, it really, Jonathan, um, really rely on you to vet these things and bring your critical thinking and skills to bear on it and, and dig deep and, and challenge the assumptions um, because I think town meeting really relies on that critical thinking that you're bringing um, on their behalf. <clears throat> Um, second, something that had faded away in past meetings that I know you're trying to bring back is the use of subcommittees so that all of you don't have to do everything on every article. Now, this isn't less true here in the, in the special, but when the annual comes, as you break into safety and schools, et cetera, um, dig into them. I've talked to past warrant committee members that attended the school finance committee sub meetings at 7.30 uh, weekday mornings when they were a member of the school subcommittee. And they wanted to find out what does this line item mean? What does that language mean? I thought you said this last week. Why is this coming up this week? I mean, they really dug in. So again, part of your skepticism and due diligence is they've got the details and um, they owe you those details. So feel free to weigh in as, as far as you want to weigh in. And then you can come back as experts to the overall committee. So there's a thought. Second, um, training. I know, Tom, I think a year ago you went to the Mass Municipal Association and got DVDs 
yes. I believe. Yes. I'd encourage everyone, if you, particularly the new members, to go through this because it's it's uh, education from experts. How do finance committees or warrant committees work best across the Commonwealth? So I'd really encourage you to to do that because you're bound both by um, our bylaws and by by state law, um, and plus tradition to know how best to go um, conduct ourselves and represent yourself in town meeting and consider the warrant. So um, if you don't have copies, I can help get some, but I think you've got, I know you got some when you went to last yeah. year's meeting. Um, one thing, some advice from uh, uh, town council is to keep all your correspondence because from time to time, we will get a request from a citizen, an attorney to say, I need everything on this article. Mm -hmm. And so that means if you get emails from citizens, you get emails from one another, you really, it's, it's a really a legal document. You would know this. You can't destroy that stuff. So I end up funneling, for example, I've got a town address. I funnel everything through my town email address. So if somebody sends me something personally, I put it, I send it to the town address, and then I reply back. You might consider creating your own warrant committee address so it doesn't, so you have a separate place to make sure you keep all that stuff. It's all in one spot. And by the way, John says this applies to texts and personal emails, um, letters, all that stuff. So we get we get one or two of these a year. We just got one a couple of weeks ago <laughs> through the town clerk for something. So please keep all your correspondence. Um, so to Lynn, one other thing uh, from John and the clerk is post the minutes of the committee on the town website. Uh, many of our committees don't, and I think a lot there's some citizens that pay close attention, and they really benefit from reading what you folks have uh, all discussed. So uh, um, please post the minutes. Um, one thing is there are finance committees across the Commonwealth and many of them post on their websites who their chairs are. So you can leverage other towns. For example, if something is coming up and you want to investigate the select board, you could go to the finance committee or the warrant committee or some of these other towns and say, you guys consider a select board, what were the pros and cons? So just go to you know Concord or Needham or Dedham or all the towns around here, go to the websites, you know, search for either, either call them warrant committee, most of the time it's finance committee, and they'll consider those things. You can use those as uh, resources for you and then call those people up. Because if you say you know, you're trying to walk a mile in their shoes, um, they'll pick up the phone and talk. A um, la couple of things. Uh, if you don't want to get emails directly from citizens, I'd encourage you to funnel things through Lynn, who's our public address and email. We've had cases where things get contentious and everybody wants to... I get requests all the time. Can you give me the names uh, and email addresses of all the warrant committee members? And my answer is... Uh, we give you their their name and home phone, but emails, uh, it's up to them, it's up to you. So if you don't want to be deluged, you can go through Lynn as her, because um, she's the, the public email address of the committee. That, so it's up to you if you want to disclose your email address out to the world. Um, lastly, if I can help in any way, uh, I'm rhiss at townofmilton.org. Uh, currently in disguise, but I may clean up for town meeting. Um, so I'm happy to go help uh, uh, get resources or answer questions or do anything you c I, I can. Again, um, thanks for serving. And I look forward to seeing you all on October 22nd. Is that right? Yes. yes, sir. All right. Any questions I can answer for anybody here before I leave you to it? I have no air conditioning at home, so I may not go. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> with that, I think I'll uh, You're a true New okay. Englander. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bob, thanks very much. Thanks, Bob. Okay. We have, we're going to take uh, the articles we have for consideration a little bit out of order um, because we have, I can see, uh, several of the constituents uh, who are, will be uh, answering some of our questions that came up in the last meeting. Would the library uh, committee like to come first, Bill, and uh, just please introduce yourself when you sit down at the mic. Um, there's, another, there's another chair over here. Do you want me to bring chairs down, George? Yeah. Yeah. About this one? We only need two. Yeah, take this one. Here, I'll carry it. We only need the two. We're all set. Well, that's all right. This is it's much nicer to swivel. <laughs> okay. We had uh, we had several questions about um, the transfer of the Kidder Branch Library property, which is Article 14. The discharge of the building committee we passed unanimously. That's Article 13. That was easy. Um, but the transfer of the Kidder Branch Library property uh, uh, generated a couple of questions by the membership. So I'll just, oh, if you want to explain or you have something you'd like to say about it, uh, that may answer some of the questions beforehand. But please uh, feel free to uh, give, a, give us uh, your ideas. Sure. The, uh, I'm John Folcarelli. I'm chair of the uh, Board of Trustees. Uh, I'm Will Adams. I'm the library director. 
And the, uh, I mean, this is a fairly simple article. We, you know, uh, the trustees for really the past two years have been, well, longer than that, but have been discussing what to do with the Kidder property. The, uh, in an ideal world, it would be a branch, but that's not going to happen in any, in our lifetimes. So the, uh, uh, you know, right now we're a landlord. You know, we uh, have Will, who's our director, spending a fair amount of time being the uh, property maintenance person, and et cetera. And it just doesn't conform with the mission of the library. And you know, under the uh, the deed, uh, you know, the sale of the uh, property, the money would be go to the uh, trustees to uh, look at other kinds of uh, capital expenses that we need. One of our pressing needs, I think, as everyone knows, and if you look uh, up and down Canton Avenue tonight, you see the, you know, parking is a big issue. Huge. So, so that's, uh, I mean, there's not a lot of options. Otherwise, we would have solved that a long time ago. But those are the kinds of things that, you know, we would think that uh, we would look at with uh, the proceeds from, uh, from this. We're going to go through the RFP process. We've been, you know, working on a draft RFP. If, if the uh, town meeting says that we can uh, sell sell the property, and that's, you know, that's essentially it. Where we, uh, you know, presently we rent it to a uh, school that would like to buy it, which is, you know, again fine with us. But the, uh, you know, the, it's just going to depend on how. What would the value that you expect to realize equal? equal? Or is there any estimate, or is there a comp? I don't know that there's a comp for property of that nature. So I think it's it's premature to say. Um, we've been, I think it's assessed in the town books at a little over a million dollars uh, for tax purposes. Um, but for sale prices, it would, you know, there'd be some uh, okay. increase in that. And then the other thing I would add that um, is that we've been working with town council uh, John Flynn throughout the whole process to um, to make sure that uh, we're doing everything as uh, according to the deed, and um, he's been helping a uh, with the discussions about the RFP process that, would, like John said, would come after um, town meeting. Are there any restrictions as to the use of the property? If in the event of a sale, it doesn't revert to the Kidders, Nathaniel Kidder Trust, or no, it's, 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 a, like it was that. an outright no. gift. Yeah, right. right. Well, uh, was it a gift through through it uh, through a will or? I think through the. I mean, and do we do we know what that will says? Uh, it was yeah. Uh, town councils reviewed the will. Yeah. Okay. And it's uh, it was uh, it deeded to the town in the um, uh, with the trustees overseeing it, and it was uh, the, the language of the will. And I'm paraphrasing is uh, if if. The property is sold. It's sold by the trustees, and it would be for library purposes or library services. The money would go back to block. That's right. Okay. And and nothing specific. It could be anything. Yeah. About. No. It says no. in there that like, it could be used for branches anyway. or other library services. Okay. Services. As I'm reading Article 14, and maybe it's missing something, but uh, it says to, to see if the town will transfer the former Kittle uh, uh, Branch Library uh, 101 um, Blue Parkway from the trustees, but it doesn't say to who. To. Okay. This was the uh, the language that town council provided us. Um, but it's got to it it, be held in a trust. See, I don't know. <laughs> Would be my guess. I mean, it, it, it's got to be held somewhere to vote to to move it to the trustees. No, I see. It's saying from, from trustees, trustees to the trustees, but no, right. the difference is in the purposes. If I read that right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Yeah. Can we get town that may be to worth a question that? to John. Yeah, yeah, yeah to John Flynn. That just sounds weird. Transfer the yeah, former Kidder Branch Library fine, property yeah, at 101 Blue Park from the, the trustees of Milton, Milton Public Library to whomever, whatever, whatever shell corporation within the town is to convey it. If if that's going to happen, yeah. Yeah. I think it's this is just probably legal language that allow yeah. them to sell it from holding right. it as a yeah from yeah, holding it as a property to the purpose of selling it. Right, still worth a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and. Has, have the library trustees determined if there's any other public use for the for the building? I mean, well, for for any other town department or or is that? I've actually had a lot of discussions okay. with uh, the other departments. Nobody, you know, nobody's willing to to uh, take it 
you know, from from us. I mean, lots of people have lots of ideas, but we we, we at this point yeah, don't want to be the landlord. That would make us the landlords unless somebody or another town department. We talked to the schools. Uh, we've had some discussions with uh, Beth Israel, which of course isn't a town department, mm -hmm. but you know, so facilities far. looked at the building. A yeah. number, a number of town departments looked at the building to see um, if it could be utilized by them. Because and, and there, there was discussion about a teen, you know, we had a public right. meeting, and there's discussion about a teen center, et cetera. That's central, yeah. Yeah. But, right. but that's yeah. you know, I think they would have to buy it. But for that to happen, I, I would buy it certainly as trustees, our interest would be that the town buy it from us and then. Yeah. Take it. We, you know, as I said, we want to be out of the landlord business. Understood. Okay. Are there any other questions, Aaron? What's the space? What's the acreage? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know if I have that. Because it's gorgeous. <coughs> um, it's a really pretty building. I just want to say that again. I said it last week. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. It's a really pretty building, and I understand it's totally dilapidated inside, but. It's a nice building. Oh, it's not bad. No, yeah. <laughs> no. You know, I don't. Is it I'd a couple be... acres? No. No, I don't no, think no, no. so. Is it one? I think it is one, I but even... I will. I can find it out. Yeah. It's okay. Don't it, it, it won't swim my boat, so don't worry about that. <laughs> I, I'm just curious because it is in a residential <laughs> setting, correct? Right. Yes. It is. It, it's zoned it is. residential. It's right. zoned. Um, I have that. It's zoned residential. Um, zone residential it says section 3 a and b so it's residential or educational purposes or non-profit educational corporation Correct. or charitable or philanthropic okay yeah. thank you and i'm gonna i'm gonna assume it's around an acre it's about an acre i, okay. yeah, I, I have you. that information i'm just uh, no it's fine thank you yeah. any other questions clinton please are there any restrictions to who you can sell it to? Uh, no, not. I mean, it, it would just be. Uh, you know, the article said something like, "Who are the trustees deemed?" Uh, no, well, the RFP would the RFP process would be a grading of you know who the you know you'd give higher marks to to uh, depending on how we set that to depending on what they're proposing as a use. Okay, so just basically the residential, what you just said. Right, okay. and if they wanted to, you know, any, if somebody bought it, a developer bought it, for example, they'd have to go through the zoning yes, process and the, right. that whole thing, that would be up to, them. up to them. We, at, our, at that point, would just say, you know, good luck. Right, okay, all right, thank you. And One more question. It's 0. .539 acres. 0. .539. Thank you. Uh, this is not on 14. On, on, even though we voted 13, I, um, I do have a question. Um, th uh, this is on disbanding the, uh, the building committee. Yes. Um, th there is still some unspent money, is there not? There's still some. So w was that under the control of the building committee? That was. Okay, so we'll, what will happen with that, that will control of that? So we've been working, again, with the uh, town council, uh, um, Town administrator and the town accountant on that, and the um, town, the library and building committee will take a vote to uh, dissolve. But before they do that, they will vote uh, to hand those monies over to the library trustees. When looking at the accounting, when the library was uh, being built and there was a building process or a number of different um, revenue funds uh, streams for the building of the library, um, some was state money, some was uh, town bonded money, and some was gifts. Um, the money that is left in that account is left in the gift account. Right. So it's uh, going um, into the trust. How much money is still there? Uh, do you remember? Yeah, it's like around a little bit less than 300000 300, We already yeah. spent yeah. a little bit of it last uh, year. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. The capital committee spent $80,000 for the floors that are right. supposed to be done. Starting when? next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So those downstairs floors that definitely need. Right. Any other questions? Thank you very much. And I'll, and I'll just say that we're having a... <coughs> an open forum on October 15th before our trustees meeting if any residents have any questions about it as well. So, thank you. Thank you uh, very thank much. You. Do we have to have any further discussion on Article 4? Does anybody feel that we need to? Because if not, we can take the vote on this. I move to accept the article as presented. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion? Again, before we do that, can we at least get the clarification? I mean, so we don't have to reopen this thing? Oh, on the transfer on the language? Yeah. Uh, okay.
So we can table this until we get that language clarification. Fine. All right, motion is tabled till then. Thank you very much. Uh, I have both Chief King and Chief Grant. Which of you wants to go first? <laughs> you can go first. You got it. Which is which? This is Chief King. He's the Chief of Police. Hi, everybody. John King. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Um, we had several, uh, well, a few questions about the uh, Article 10, which is the act that authorizes the appointment of retired police officers as special police officers. Do you want to give us a little more background on that, please? Sure. It's to address uh, basically vacancies in the detail system. So the way it works now is after you go through all the current members, uh, one or two things happen. Either you give it to a, another police department, meaning a neighboring community, and or if they don't fill it, you just go without that detail officer. So that's kind of the problem in simple terms. Um, so what this would do is basically allow retired officers to be available to work those details. And uh, the reason behind it is basically to, you know, where now we either have no one that's vacant or, you know, I could have a Randolph officer or a Quincy officer, you know, what have you, um, a Norfolk County Sheriff, basically whoever we can scrounge up to fill that vacancy where now we would be having a Milton officer who, you know, assumably worked 30 years here and knows our train and knows our policies, knows the community, knows the town. Um, so this is pretty common in policing. We're, we're a little behind the times in the state. Uh, there's well over 200, close to 250 communities doing this. Uh, in the surrounding area, uh, Quincy, Canton, Randolph, Braintree, Weymouth, um, you know, this is the norm. Boston has put this language in place. They just haven't started yet, but the city council did approve it. Um, like I said, we're probably in the minority here, a little behind the times. And basically, it's just to fill these vacancies. Um, so on our end, you know, we'd have more control over the officers where now I could have, you know, 12 officers tomorrow that work for different departments that really aren't accountable to me. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. they'd be, you know, my own people directly. Accountable. Um, accountability, I think, in terms of vacancies versus filling them, it's just safer. You have the offices at these construction sites. These are all paid for by whoever's hiring them. It's not paid for by the town. And uh, any of these that go unfilled or we give away, we don't collect the, uh, the town doesn't collect the administrative fee. They get 10% of every detail. So if we fill them with our staff, they also get that 10% on every detail we fill now. So, I mean, that's the gist of it. Uh, thank you. Cool. Hey, Chief, how are you? Good, how are you, man? Uh, are we looking for a, a set number of um, officers, or you have a number in mind, or just as it? Uh, no, there wasn't a set number. It, the appointment would be based on, uh, you know, the town administrator and, and me would consult. But in the beginning, um, you know, there's a five-year kind of look back. We don't want to go beyond five years, which is written in here. So in other words, somebody who retired 20 years ago wouldn't be eligible. Just because they're training and everything, we would be outdated. Um, so we're keeping it to within the last five years. But the first few years, that would be a slower process. You know, we, you know, we might add, you know, I'm making up this number, but, you know, five this year. There could be, a, you know, a couple next year. Each year you might add. So it grows. But it's discretionary appointment. So if we thought it got too large, we just don't appoint others. But I didn't put an actual number cap on it because the needs also can vary by year based on how much work. How many there is. would be eligible if you had to? If this were approved uh, at this meeting, how many would be eligible to be to have the status? Up Currently, uh, yes. if it was immediate, only about a half dozen. But you, oh, you, like that's it's, huge. That's big. So yeah, when you, but you that know, would help with the details. Yeah, when you only have fifty-six officers, that's yeah. you know more than ten percent of an increase. Yeah. Plus, yeah. over the next couple of years, you yeah. you know you could you be up to more. ten or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom. Okay, uh, a couple of questions to you. Uh, number one, um, will these um, special offices be required to retire at age 70? Or, I mean, there's an age 70 in here. Well, yeah, I know, but, but in, in terms of the, the special detail. Or yes, we put an age cap on the 70th birthday. That, that was kind of the norm, okay. uh, just to get sure it is so, you know, with age. So that, okay, so I, I understand that now. Um, and the other question, um, the, my understanding is, um, Will they be employees? A normal police officer, the, the detail pay is included in the W-2, uh, and then we bill back the contract for whatever it was. Will this be the same way? Will they be employees of the town? Uh, they are in terms of they're like crossing guards, so they, they wouldn't receive benefits. There's a lot of, if you see all the 
mumbo jumbo here, right. but there's a lot of exclusions. Uh, you know, they're excluded from you know unemployment, pension, like basically all the benefits, injured on duty pay. All those exclusions are in here, so they would very much kind of be treated like crossing guards. We have crossing guards that are full time, and we have substitutes might work one day a year, might work a hundred days a year, depending upon you know filling vacancies. Okay. So it would be similar system to that. We would just maintain the list. They'd only get paid if they worked. We would bill for that detail and pay them. But if they went three months and didn't work, they would get nothing. So what is it if they work less than an average of how many hours a week is it they're they're considered part time? I mean I know they have to kind of work because they can't they can only make so much money otherwise they. Yeah, so they're capped by law, so um, you know, that debt exclusion's in here towards the end. But basically, they can't make more than the difference between their pension and what you know basically that position pays currently. And then after one year, after 12 months, they can make an additional 15 grand. So to simplify that, I'll make up the numbers, but say an officer was making $70,000 a year today mm -hmm. and retired and got a $50,000 pension, they can only make that $20,000 difference for the first year. Gotcha. And then every year thereafter, they could make the 20 plus 15. Okay. 15000 additional. But it's capped. They couldn't go out and make $75,000 doing these mm -hmm. things. Okay. For purposes of our health insurance and stuff like that, it's um, you're, you're eligible when you hit so many hours per week. Uh, could that ever occur? Well, two things. They're already getting insurance. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's yeah. no yeah. extra benefits. Yeah. 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 Okay. And okay. 65, the Medicare. It's not cost of the time. It doesn't matter. It does, yeah. There's a, there's a contribution. No, I'm talking about because the, uh, the contractors are actually going to be paying. The contractors, so. yeah. The contractors are going to be billed for the hourly rate, which is all they're getting. There's Correct. no benefits. Right. Um, you know, if an officer is retired after 35 years here, he, he is getting the health insurance through his pension. Correct, yeah. So there'd okay. be no additional. Chris, you had a question. I just have a question about all the mumbo jumbo. So, um, <laughs> from a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is written as an authorization to have the, the select, what I hope is the select board, um, prevent, provide a petition to the legislature that would then pass this as a law. I'm just curious to know. If you know whether the language was is borrowed from currently existing um, legislation or, or where the language comes from, yeah. Uh, and to tack on that is what is the how does this impact the card flagger law that's in effect, which actually went through in 2013. So that's a bigger concern is whether or not this actually complies with what the state allowed because they actually came in against this mm -hmm. and said that flaggers have the right to be flaggers mm -hmm. and that we should not hire special police to do the job of a flagger. So, so yeah, so I'm, so, so I'm curious, basically along the same lines, was this essentially like lifted from what other towns have had passed in the legislature? Uh, yes. Um, just the first part there for the language. So I researched a, a ton of departments, mm -hmm. a lot neighboring, but five, Framingham, you know, up on the North Shore, Essex. And I would say about 95% is consistent language everywhere. Mm -hmm. What you see tweaked, and I'll say I think ours is probably the safer on the town and more restrictive, the majority of them allow like an injured on duty pay and actually allow some benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, this is written more restrictive. So I, I culminated basically <coughs> probably 40 different, and I'd say 95% of this. I tweaked some things that I thought were more restrictive, and then after drafting that, I had a uh, meeting with John Flynn, the town council, and we went over it. He actually was immediately familiar with it because he had worked on it in other communities that they represent, like Norwood okay. and stuff, and he actually mentioned that the language is very similar. So that, that's where the language came from. The, the flag of bill, um, it doesn't say that the town shouldn't hire special police officers. What it allows is an option for the construction contractors to hire flaggers if they want. Um, since that passed, it, it happens, but it's very rare. Um, I can tell you, like, I would say 99% still hire the police officer because you know, the flag is cheaper maybe in New Hampshire. What happened in Massachusetts is that the prevalent wage law. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the flaggers were making cheaper, but not what people expected, I think, $30 cheaper. The prevailing wage law, you know, if an officer was making $40 an hour, some of these flaggers were making $36, 37 mm -hmm. And we saw a few companies start using them, and people were driving by them, and people were, you know, just ignoring them. And I think they felt, hey, if we're saving $3 an hour, we'd rather have the officer. So nothing in this language 
impacts that, you know, that came in under Deval Patrick. I'm very familiar with it. I was union president at the time. I attended personally those state transportation meetings in town. Um, so I, I'm pretty familiar with it. Nothing in this impacts that or contradicts that. That's an option. That option is still there. Um, but there's a mechanism of things they must do, and a lot of them don't want to do it. In addition, while well, they could save that $4 an hour, and if it's a large project, you know, that could compound to a lot of money, um, you know, especially if there's multiple offices. It also had a lot of restrictions that they're required to do. So when they hire the police officer, they can call, hey, I need two people tomorrow. When they um, hire the flagger, they, they have to do like a work zone plan. They have to submit the plan. They have to do like kind of a traffic study. There's a lot of Aaron, you have yes, a question. So um, are the retired <clears throat> police officers in formal police where that you're hiring? Yes. In they're in formal police where? Yes. How is that acceptable? Well, this is what this law basically authorizes, and it's the norm. Um, I mean, this police department that use part-time so, police officers. So a police officer who's retired and is hired to do flagging is allowed to carry a gun? Yes. And allowed to wear right. a Milton Police Department uniform? uniform. Yes. Um, you know, do you remember this wouldn't just be technically a construction detail. I mean, they, they could get hired at a detail where people are hiring the police officer because they want security. Right. They, they right. want a police officer. So, you But know, they're not <coughs> technically a police officer, correct? Am I misunderstanding? They are if this law passes. If this special. passes, then yeah, they yes. are considered police for the sole until purpose. Until they turn 70. Yes, but for the sole purpose of detail. So they wouldn't be sent down the cruiser. On regular patrol, and they can't but, but they have a full look there. like police officers. <laughs> well, they have full police officers. Wait, 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 no, wait. They are police okay, officers. Okay, can I just? I I know George, but seriously, so they're considered police officers, but they're not considered police officers. But they're allowed to wear the uniform, but not allowed to wear the uniform. Like I mean, seriously, no, no, they are they're special duty the police officers. Second so paragraph, just a detail on the scope, so uh, of what their responsibilities would be. Like, if they're doing a detail, what else could they do if right. they're on a detail? Right. Could they go in a right. space? It's a just, just so, yeah. So she Thank you. Explain. Yeah, basically, that, that section three is yeah. that, you know, when performing these duties, they have the same powers of arrest and perform functions as regular police officers. That is the if, norm right. in the industry. If they're Milton celebrators, I think you need a couple extra officers. They're there. You because can hire code retired or something. ones, and then, these they're, allowed, ones could be then assigned they're allowed there. to make arrests. Yes, even if somebody gets rowdy, retired. they can arrest them. At that Function, they wouldn't be able yes, to go and chase that's bad all they guys are, is robbing the function. bank down there. So we're allowing for, for retired police officers. I just want to make sure I'm yeah. right. That's, that's what, that's what I'm saying. our police force for special duties. Now, the question is if there's a call that you need extra police um, somewhere else and that person's on duty, that person would also be able to go and assist? Yes. Okay, so that's. that's they have, thank you for that. They're identical to regular police officers right. when working. At Those four up, right. Correct. All right. Yeah. Thank you. But so okay. I understand, if they're at a detail and the bank's being robbed, they can't go and stop the robbery, can they? Oh, yeah. Oh, they they are, certainly they could. They can. They are oh, police officers. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah that we're re-employing right. them. Okay. All right. I the, re, sort of re-employing them, but this. but they're not getting paid directly from the town. It's from the. the I, I see this as one of the advantages, yeah, personally, that's not a concern. That's, that's the advantage. I, I have uh, those extra officers. No, no, I, I can see that. I can see that. I just, it was right. just not clear in my understanding. And that's why they, if you see, like it mentions, the training requirements, they yeah. would still have to attend that training. They're not going to get paid by us to do that. They would have to do that on their own time. And they'd still to report top. to you and have they, all the other things. Right. So I, that way I know what training they've attended. So they get the exact same standards as a regular police officer. And, and you know, they, all these officers would have went to police academies and yes. been trained because right. they're retirees. And they're not automatic. In other words, what this this says is that it's under your discretion, right? In other words, so it's not like they become automatically special police officers. Correct. They have to be appointed, right? Okay. What would be? Can you auto appoint them? Or are they part of the union? Yes. Locked in? Or yeah, I wrote in here on the section four they can remove yep. suspension or removal by the police chief. Okay. Or remove at your discretion. By discretion. So if it was a problem for cause, employee, so say later. Just your you, yeah, exactly. Okay. 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 They have no union protections. That's removed in this okay. bylaw. Yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, if there are no other questions, Chair will entertain a motion to approve this or recommend it or whatever we want to do with it. So moved. I make a motion that we recommend for town meeting that this be approved. Okay. We have the we have the motion recommended. We have a second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. Thank you very much. Can you record the abstentions and the no's as well? Oh, sure. Thank Do we have any? I, I vote no. Okay. 
uh, was not unanimous, which is good. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine yeses and one no. Oh, I didn't see everybody raise their hand, but okay. I raised my hand. Okay. okay. Do, we, do we want to do it again? Just no, it's fine. Are there any other abstentions? Don't worry, I'm the only one. Okay. Nine just, yeses and one nay. Okay. Chief. An important one. Chief Grant. Aaron. Welcome. Important one. Um, I don't think we need more cops. I hate I hate I hate I don't. Chief Grant, we had a couple of questions about the Fire Station Building Committee and the new members proposed, uh, two new members to be added, including yourself and a member of the Fire Department. And I think there were some <coughs> questions about the rationale for adding people to the committee mm -hmm. who would be subject to what the committee decided. So if, if you can give us some background, that would be helpful. I'm not sure, I'm not sure I got the gist of what you were looking for there. You have you and the um, uh, active member of the fire the department. department. Well, I, I shouldn't say that it'd be myself. And it, the, the way it was written, it would be the sitting chief. So that, say I was to retire, you know, it would be Well, I, we're hoping chief. that the building committee will be completed be the, 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 the work be before you retire. <laughs> or, <laughs> That's a good thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah or you but you never know. So, okay, so it would I get be that. myself and it would be... So uh, the rationale for having the chief member. and a member of the department on the building committee which historically had not included them, was a question that came up. Uh, yeah. Um, basically, it's in, in my mind, and in, in, in talking with people in the street as well, um, there's a lot of mis or, or not understanding why we're not there in the first place. Um, and it's really, it's one of those things that we're such a unique organization and have such a varied function that people who aren't within our walls just don't understand what we what we do uh, and the need for you know certain things to be there or set up a certain way um, so you know really what we're looking to do is be part of the conversation for buildings that are going to exist for realistically the next hundred years mm -hmm. so that's you know kind of in a nutshell the thought process what are the thoughts of the additional members of the committee the other nine members is there is everybody in favor of this I there was no formal vote taken on this but I could say due to the discussion that took place at the last meeting that they're really not in favor of this why oh. uh, I don't know um, I don't know that, you know, I, I caught them off guard. You'd, have, you'd really have to talk to them about it. I had discussed it previously with the chair, but it never came up to the committee. Um, you know, I don't know that they, you know, were caught off guard. And, you know, I know one of them actually said that he was insulted by it. Um, and it's not, and, and I said that when, you know, we're not looking, it, it, it's a good, it's a, it's a very good committee. If you look at their bios and you know the varied you know backgrounds that they have, all in in building, um, it's a very good committee. The presentation um, they made at town meeting uh, last spring was was I thought very good, very, yeah. very impressive. It was very tight um, and concise. Yes, yeah, really. It's you know like you say, it's it's for us to be part. You know we don't have a building background. Um, we have a professional background, sure. um, and, and again, we're, we're, you know, they could easily build this building without, you know, Mike Dennehy sitting on the committee. Um, you know, the, the opportunity for something to be missed you know, is, is just big, you know, because we're not dealing with anybody who remotely is going to be an expert in fire service. Um, and, and you know this health and safety and, and training <clears throat> things at play here that we're behind the eight ball on 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 our best day um, and you know you again you just hate for this project to go by and not have had that ability to have direct conversation uh, and, and give and take yeah. at the meeting you know they They've got it set up that they, they do a citizen speak at the beginning, and they do a citizen speak at the end, but there's no interaction there. 
Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, they also have me sitting at the table with them um, and, and encourage some input on my part. Um, but, you know, as John King just said himself, you know, I'm a past union president. And I've been involved in, in these kind of things through the better part of my career. Um, I'm very familiar with the rules of order. Uh, and although I do have some input, um, you know, I don't interject anywhere near as much as I would if I was a formal member of that committee. Uh, you know, I, I look back to, and, and I wish I brought it, I, I didn't think of it until I was sitting down here. There was, a, a, and it wasn't a building study, it was an overall fire department study that was done in 1960 and <coughs> published in 1961. And the opening paragraph, you know, states that basically all three buildings were obsolete. In 1960. In 1960. Mm -hmm. That's so sad. Now, the kicker, well, here's, here's the kicker as it pertains to this conversation, I believe. Engine 2 was constructed in 1950. Stop. So 10 years later it wasn't even was obsolete. Uh, and, and I'd have to say, in large part, that was by you know not going to the people who work there and what do you need and um, you know and we know so much more now than we knew back then that you know uh, it, it's very important for us yeah, to be there. Questions? By, by formal member, you mean a voting member, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if you were if if it were to be. Um, you know, a formal, if you were to be you and, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the fire chief and a member of the fire department mm -hmm. were to be a member, a formal member, but non-voting, that, that's not which that, that wouldn't be enough. You would want to have a, a voting capacity. I don't think that would be off the table in my estimation. Um, you know, I, I, in my mind, I'd like to see it a voting member. Uh, for the simple reason that, you know, one of the phrases that, that they threw out there that it was, it was a conflict of interest. And I looked around the room, and I forget now whether there's seven members on that committee currently or nine. 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 It's nine. So, you know, I said, come on. I said, give yourself more credit, you know. I, I watched the give and take there, and, and these are contentious meetings at times. Um, <clears throat> Dick Wells came into the first meeting because they asked for a, a liaison from the selectmen and when we were walking out he says, are they always like this? <laughs> uh, so I, I said, that's I say, I, I said right to them, I said, give, you, give yourselves more credit guys. If we're going down a wrong road, you will quite simply outvote us nine to two. Uh, and the other side of the coin as well as the department member should not be chosen by me. And you may find that he or she and I don't agree, you know. Uh, and you know, you guys had a vote just now that wasn't unanimous. I Thank think you. that's a good thing. Yeah, me too. You know, Can I just ask a quick follow-up? I'm, I'm sorry. Um, under this provision, would anything prevent either the fire chief or a member of the fire department from being the chair of the building committee? As written, no. Uh, I don't think that would be anybody in anybody's best interest. <clears throat> but it would be permissible under this. It right? would be, yeah. The way it's written, it would, yeah. Um, would you know, it change the original I, article? Yeah, the I, 2017. I, we could probably rewrite something like that. Actually, you could, pro you could probably write that in a recommendation yeah. if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you can't change the article, but yeah. we can make the recommendation. It's, it's, it's limiting. A recommendation to limit. Scope. Yeah, I, you know, just just as kind of a little little background when when we went into the um, uh, study committee the first version of the committee uh, Brian Walsh came and sat in my office uh, as the um, um, moderator at the time and we talked about some things uh, and he asked me what I wanted um, I wanted a fire service person on there uh, and we chose uh, Brian Tui, who was a captain over on Boston Fire. Uh, and just to have that, you know, knowledge base aside from Milton. But I also told him that there was a couple of members that I didn't specifically want on there. Uh, and one of them was Chief Larson. Uh, and, you know, he kind of looked at me funny and I said, you know, this, all these committees need to have credibility. 
And if you had the current fire chief and the past fire chief, I think you throw your credibility out the window right then and there. And that's not remotely what I'm looking. I want a credible committee here. I, you know, we just want input. So, I, I not only would I, you know, uh, accept that in there, I would support that. Not to have one of us as the chair. Thank you, Kevin. Did you have a, or um, I, I think um, Chris <coughs> had asked my question. It was about um, your ability to vote or not vote, because I mean, that was a question mm -hmm. that came up last week. Um, the, the other issue that, that I was struggling with was around why have um, a member um, as well as the fire mm -hmm. chief and <laughs> thinking that there's internal differences that then are presented publicly to the committee. Yeah, that, that's certainly a possibility. You know, we would probably talk out our differences before we got to the table. But I think the reason to do it mm -hmm. is just the difference in our job descriptions. Um, if you put me over there right now and said, you know, show me how to run that engine, I couldn't do it. Um, you know, those, those guys, I, I'm 10 years in that office and, you know, another year and a half as a deputy chief. Uh, it's my role supervisory. My role is not hands-on. So they see things from a different mm -hmm. point of view than I do, and, and their input's pretty important. And, and, and also, just the last follow-up, um, so the, that gets you to the number of 11. So not that there would ever be a so it's still five no five split right. with this group from what I'm hearing. <laughs> um, but you still would have the ability to have a split vote. You still would have the ability to have a split vote, yes. Yeah. Tom. Um, Chief, how you doing? I'm doing well. Good. Um, is there any precedent for, for doing this that you're aware of? I mean, uh, Randolph just recently built a fire station. What was? You know, I, I thought of that as I was sitting here. And again, it's probably some research I should have done. Uh, a large amount of feedback from the people that we're talking to said, make sure you're part of the process. Exactly. Whether they were or not, I don't have the answer to. Mm -hmm. um, I, know, I know in certain instances they weren't, uh, so I'm, I'm guessing it's probably somewhat split, but I don't have any weight to give you on that. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Chief. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I appreciate Thank your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, please. Before we before uh, we move or anybody moves, can I can I suggest <laughs> that before we we vote on this, that we actually have um, the chair of the building committee come to? Yeah, I had, I had made that invitation invited. through the through the uh, town moderator, but I, I gather nobody was able to come. But I, I would like to hear from them because it's and it's also selectmen. It's uh, an important thing. And the selectmen have recommended this, so when Mr. Wells comes next Wednesday, we may ask him as well, but I'll make sure that that happens. I, I was hoping we wouldn't take a vote on this tonight because I do want to have input from the fire uh, building committee. Um, and it will be interesting to hear the other side, but I, I, I understand the need to have the professional perspective on it. My question was always, okay, he's there, he's going to the meetings. The perspective is there, it's just not voting. Um, and there is a difference between being able to vote and then being a consultant. So I understand that as well. But uh, we'll table this one until then. But um, we can continue because we do have a bunch of things to do still. We have the, the uh, chair of the planning board here. And you're welcome to come and talk to us. Please introduce yourself at the microphone so we have you. Mr. Chair, are we undertaking one through nine? We are going to be, well, we're leaving it to the, to the chair of the planning board to talk to us about what she wants to talk at this point. But now we're focused on articles one through nine because as I've understood it, um, uh, we have, uh, we're under a little bit of a time, as you and I have, have corresponded, we're under a little bit of a time pressure because the um, planning board meetings are not jiving with the de deadlines for publication uh, uh, printing requirements, so we're going to have to invent something. Uh, so before the, the distinguished guest speaks, I'd like it noted that I have not had the opportunity to read one through nine until it was given to me this evening by one of my Understood. Committee. I think a few of us have that issue. Yeah. But okay, so I just wanted yeah. that noted. Understood. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. But Scherf. please go I ahead. I was the one who gave you the copy. Yeah. What? I, I gave you the copy. I know you did, but I wasn't going to single you know that. that you gave it. He just put that in <laughs> so this is a tough crowd. <laughs> Cheryl, please. Uh, excuse me. Good evening. Cheryl Tagayas, uh, Chair of the Planning Board. 
I sat at this table as on the Warren Committee with Tom Hurley for four years before I became a member of the planning board. So I appreciate your efforts Boy, and you understand what you four do. Years, you get to go to heaven <laughs> with your clothes on. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the dilemma that uh, George and I emailed about has to do with the, the timing of our articles. Um, we had some that came to us by recommendation of the building commissioner, Joe Prondack. We had some that members of the planning board worked on and some that the whole board worked on. So some of them are a little bit simple and some are a little more complex. We just reviewed those with town council at our meeting last Thursday. So I can give you an update uh, on that discussion. Please. And then um, there'll be some additional information forthcoming for before next week's meeting of the, on the 5th, and I can come back and give you the update on those. Well, one thing I'd be interested, if you could, uh, time permitting, just kind of go through the articles and just kind of give us the gist of the article and, and, the, and the background behind it. Absolutely. Uh, can, I, can I add one thing to that? If, it, if it's okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, and also, because of the time issue, I actually wonder, the timing issue, I should say, it would also be good to note whether any of these are particularly important to consider in this <clears throat> special town meeting as opposed to waiting spring. Well, you know, I was, when I was on the Warren Committee, it was when the, the fall town meeting was proposed because of the zoning articles. Mm -hmm. Because we had a difficult time addressing a lot of zoning articles as well as the budget articles in the spring. Right. So it was suggested. That is a little bit of a challenge for the planning board we've been discussing because uh, we need to po hold public hearings on all zoning articles, and those public hearings don't happen until after the Board of Selectmen accept the zoning articles. And we hear from the public that they don't like us to hold public hearings on zoning in July and August when a lot of people are away. So we get caught in this little bit of a, a, a timing issue, which we're going to continue to talk through because we continue to try and work on zoning articles. So we, we were hoping... Can I just ask real quickly, why is the town moderator slash town manager not working to streamline this so that it actually administrator, you mean? that one too town administrator, that right. one too um so that you don't have the issue that you're having right now in front of us and we don't have the issue that we're having so why is the town administrator not working yeah. to make this the, happen the, town, the special town meeting is a specific date yeah in the bylaw you right, have to change but he the bylaw. knows it well, one of the things for well, us, well, like Cheryl said, yeah, look, the, the, the holding public meet public hearings is, is the is the real problem. Right, and yes. they can't you have to they have can't be two done weeks in of the notice. Summer. Why can't for they the be done? Because there's so many people on vacation. Oh, Nobody sweet wants Jesus. to go to it. Really? So you get complaints <laughs> from the neighbors. So my point was simply from the residents. Notwithstanding, I I get all that. I just thought it might be useful to say, look, if we really had to, this could be. I'll go mm. through them. One of the things well, that we that would be helpful. I think I think if oh, we can just keep our commentary limited and permit the chair of the planning board to go through. Can you say something about that? <laughs> you, have, you have 30 seconds. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to be polite. And, <laughs> and I hope everybody else is the same. I think I, I take the point about coordinating. This is something that we started to discuss at the spring meeting. It, it has to be addressed now because- It's not her fault. It, no, it's certainly, no, I don't think fault is, we're not ascribing fault. No. We're just saying that the issue is timing and timing is not our friend this time. There may be a way to get around some of them. The question is going to be, how complex are these and yes. how much right. deliberation is going to be required? Because one thing that this committee really will not do is a poor job of discussion and consideration. And one of the things that we talked about the planning board is if necessary, and if, you, if the warrant committee feels as if there's not adequate time, you could send it. You could send it back to the planning board for further study as your recommendation. We could. So that's, we could. That, you know, that's yeah, so, that's an so option. It's just kicking it to the it, it, but the meeting, it's kicking so. the can down the road. But the question that's I a think, sort of a last resort. We hope it's a last right. resort. But my question to you then, uh, Cheryl, if we can go through these and if there's a possibility of even prioritizing for us, that would be helpful too because we do want to make sure that we give the best shot that we can okay. to get these things done because they're, they're, there's more than one way to skin a cat as as I said in my one of my emails to you uh, we can find a way to do what we have to do provided we get enough information and enough time to consider the articles individually so please take it away uh, I don't have the same uh, a list the order if, oh, we if can, you want me to use that any. list yeah. okay yeah. I'm sorry let's, let me grab my glasses sorry this is a little yeah, small. Right? Yeah, it was what was that to me. I had no increase. <laughs> 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 
at the same time, like, yeah, we can't time we, one thing that, oh, the also, one thing that we will not do is an inadequate job. That's that's oh, absolutely, because Article 1 is okay. seven pages long. <laughs> so, the, the height regulation, I hope, is straightforward. It's what very, it's very long. So it's yes. very long it's because long. what happened but is the uh, and Mr. Prond, the building commissioner, brought this to our attention. The amendment that was uh, voted favorably at town meeting in October of 2017 inadvertently deleted everything that he's looking to put back. Okay. Hmm. So Wait, add, what? Adding the following language. Yeah, so the language. So if we go to, I don't have these in the same order, so bear with me as I get it here. If we go to, um, if you, I have here a copy of the language that was um, adopted, and it, it says to um, basically to um, amend the section, and it, and it gives a paragraph, and then um, it does it, and it says that's the new section. What it doesn't say is it's just amending a particular paragraph within that section. Uh, uh, so everything beyond that paragraph got deleted. was deleted. Oh, and it's a lot of. And it's a Are you kidding me? <laughs> and town council and everyone, uh, town council yeah. also said last week that and that was everyone missed person? that. Everyone, everyone no missed that, including town council a year ago. Language so. works. <laughs> Were you? This is before. So it's just putting that language back in. Basically. It's just putting the language back in. Okay. Okay. So this was this was actually approved, but it was not approved because it was deleted. Right. So it's not no, the, this, this is original language. If yes. That's my understanding. Right, so the language is, the, is just going back. Going back to, the, okay. The part that was inadvertently deleted is going back. Okay. okay. That makes it simple. Okay, so that, I think that, I believe that makes that fairly straightforward. It does. Yep. Can you and answer a priority. One quick, 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 quick sure. Question. Who was our town council at that time? Same one we have yeah. now. Oh, it's the same one we have now. Just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, Cheryl. Excuse Excuse me, me, missed it. What? Town meeting missed it. Everybody missed it. Everybody it missed seems it. like everybody missed it. Miss it. The fact it, that we struck language. Do you know language. what article that was that had erased it last week? We should go back and look at that. Hey, yeah. I'm trying to look at it. Yeah. I don't, don't want to be the person writing the commentary. <laughs> no, I don't have it here with okay. me. I'm Maybe afraid. we can find that okay. because that would be helpful when we when we consider this for vote. Okay, we Article Two. Mr. Chair, sure. is your assumption that we'll take each article individually, or we will take them as a whole? Oh no, no, and we have to take them individually. So Article One is done, or Article. I'm sorry. We haven't voted on that. No, we haven't, but, yeah. but she's finished discussing it. So my question to the chair as a parliamentary procedure is, mm -hmm. are you going to ask us to vote after each one? Or are you going to ask us at the end where we stand on everything? I think we still have a couple of outstanding questions on one. What was on the, one. On, on that okay. one, particularly. I just because want to know what the plan is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, we'll vote on them individually okay. as soon as we have the questions answered. But I think there's a question about which article that referred to initially. And... I don't know, Doug, if you're going to be able to find it in time. Was it the annual or was it the yeah. I don't know, October? It was October. It was, October. It was the October. It just seems like a snack food. It yes. was, but we want to be sure that we're not going to miss something else. All right, got it. Okay, so okay. barring that, we can vote on this if, they, if it's a sense of the committee we can when we have an answer to that time. I was just in interest of letting Cheryl get through all of the, yes. we yeah. not vote anything. We're, we're not going to vote anything most yeah. likely because I don't think we have enough information on any of them yet. But go ahead, Cheryl, hit it. Okay, so the Article 2, the home occupation use. Again, uh, Building Commissioner Prondack brought us, us this. And it was, it's, was brought to us by both he and Town Clerk um, Sue Galvin, Susan Galvin. Um, the way it's currently written, um, the occupancy permit is issued by the town clerk. Mm -hmm. and they want to change that to the building commissioner because the town clerk currently refers it to the building commissioner. He refers it back to the town clerk. Um, they both support this. It's the only change. Okay. Town council did have a, a suggestion in the first paragraph where it says replacing words building commissioner in paragraphs 1, 2, and 12 
he wants to change it to wherever they appear. So if we miss a place that mm -hmm. it's referred to, um, that will it will be covered. So he's going to. He was, and then there was a question that came up on at our meeting, in um, this. So, uh, I guess it's paragraph B here. Only persons residing in the dwelling may engage. That, even though that's no change to what's currently the zoning, there was a question on our board about whether there's some confusion with that word. So, town council was going to take a look at that. But the, what's proposed right now is purely changing the person who would be in, responsible to issue the permit. Just a very quick question, if I may. Please. Sure. Um, on the changing paragraphs 1, 2, and 12 to wherever they appear, is that also the in the next line, 1, 12, 13, 14, 15, or is there a specific reason to call out those paragraphs? It seems to me it would be appropriate there as well. Yeah. Okay. Wherever they appear. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, I do have one question for sure. Uh, in, in terms of this, uh, is the plan we're contemplating for a future uh, agenda to just kind of take a look at all the zoning articles at some point in time and just kind of modernize it. If I'm not mistaken, that's going to happen at some point in time. It is a goal at some point in time. Yeah. Uh, this uh, something I uh, mentioned. Um, we, the planning board, does get um, applications that we have uh, that take priority because we have legal time frames in which we have to mm -hmm. respond to those applications. So if we're working on zoning, sometimes it gets put to the back burner while we address particular applications. Yeah. So. Um, we always have zoning on our agenda, and sometimes it gets pushed. Yeah. I can understand just doing this this way rather than to try and make it more controversial by tweaking it at the same time. Well, this is a little bit about some efficiencies in our departments, too, mm -hmm. right? Any further questions on that one? Nope. Okay. Please. Number three, oh, the parking. So this was something um, where a resident came to the planning board and, and asked about, and also the building commissioner receiving, um, I guess, questions or complaints from some about how much paving is happening in side yards or in setbacks. This addresses just corner lots. So right now, if you're a corner lot, you have front, your address is one of them. You restrict it on how much of your front yard can be paved but you're not on that side yard. So the side yard, when you're on an interior lot, it's not limited what you can pave except for the portion that's in the front yard setback. But the complaint is that there's a lot of, um, or there's some instances where that's getting paved all the way, and they're concerned about that. So this um, addresses that <coughs> corner situation where you kind of had two front yards in terms of what appears to the street, that you would be restricted on both of them, and rather than just on one. So the board was supportive of this. Um, again, it was recommended or brought to us by Building Commissioner Prondack. Number four. I did not get that out of you trying to read that article. I did not, the quantum lot thing. That, that didn't come clear at all. <laughs> Well, and that's where I, um, I asked, uh, well, at our meeting, Mr. Prondack, yeah. Mr. Prondack drew a diagram at our meeting, and so we've asked him to supply that diagram. And George, that was one of the ones that I put in the email that he yes. said he would supply, yeah. but he wouldn't have it uh, to me probably until the 12th. I'll see if we can get it for the 5th. Okay. Cheryl, what, what in this article designates it, that it's a corner lot? Yeah. Um, so I have a red line version advantage in front of me okay. here. Um, and so where it says parking in front yard, it's been added and side yard. But that so doesn't that, mean if necessarily so, a corner lot. Right, but a side yard with somebody else's house next to it is in and of itself. Because it's, it's referred to in the section. So you have to go back and look at the, way the subsections. Actually, actually reads. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which I'm sorry, I don't have the zoning code with me. You're fine. Okay. Okay. 
Let me, uh, let me just get the, so, so this is basically saying that no more than 30% of either the side setback or the front setback can on be- On the corner lot. On a corner lot can be paid. Mm -hmm. On the street facing portion. So in other words, not the side yard that's not on the street. So I'll, okay. do, I'll do a little diagram. It, it, I'm actually agreeing with Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the other side lot? Yeah, so yeah, you have yeah. the street, yeah, that's the street. Point. Yeah, there's two sides. So that's you right. have a setback on all of your faces, right? But where you have different, you have properties next to you here. It's these two setbacks where you're facing the street, not the setbacks that are next to the abutting properties, properties. that we're talking gotcha. about. Okay. So thirty percent of this area and thirty percent of that one. Okay. So if your address were this street right now, you have that restriction, but you don't have it have for the restriction this restriction on the side. Okay. And you're looking to put okay. it. So if your neighbor is here, and right, and they now they're fa or your neighbor is over here, and they're looking at a fully paved, potentially a fully right. paved setback. So this would limit it. Right. Okay. Okay. It's only Hopefully the, we'll have a better it's diagram. Only the yeah, the diagram right. would help. But yeah. uh, when next time when we talk about it, that would be very helpful. Talking about too, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if they got, right. if they got. 40 feet on that side, they can, as long as they're not going into the 15 foot setback area. No, it's, it's within the setback that they can do it, but only 30% of the setback. Right. Right. So, so if, if they, 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 they didn't approach the setback, they could do as much as they want. All oh, right. If yeah. it was, okay. if it's beyond the setback within their property, <laughs> then that's not part of this yeah. regulation. Okay. Oh, cool. okay. Thank you. Okay. But as I say, the, the, the diagram, would, the picture's worth a thousand words for us. Agreed. Okay. <laughs> Article four. Article four. All right, four is a little more complicated. And this probably will need a diagram for people to understand. This came about um, again, trying to make things a little simpler. Oftentimes, we, Milton has a lot of pre-existing, non-conforming structures oh, yeah. mm -hmm. that require people to go get a variance. So the planning board was trying. Um, to make that a little bit less onerous by having it be a special permit process by the Board of Appeal. And this has already went through and already passed, but the building commissioner has identified and he feels as if the requirements that we put in for the special permit are more onerous, <laughs> so making it more <laughs> difficult for the property owners. And so he, um, he was seeking to change that, but at the same time, he was seeking to change a few other things. And this one probably would benefit from a red line version, so I can go over it a little bit, but maybe we want to discuss it further with the diagram and with the red line version. The diagram will be helpful. Yeah, but I want to point out that this is what he was trying to address. This is a, a, Pretty a dense. paragraph yeah. that's a page long that addresses a lot of issues. Yeah. So first of all, he wanted to pull them out. Town Council was very supportive of this, of pulling them out into separate paragraphs. That's smart. So it's sort of an organizational. Okay. Um, and then because the way um, the bylaw has written and the way he's interpreted it, it's gone, it, there's been some appeal of decisions. So he wants to clarify some of the language to make it more, his interpretation sort of more readily understandable and mm -hmm. more black and white, if you yeah. will. Um, and so, if you don't mind, I, I would like to get you the red line version so that'd that we can helpful. go over yeah, that in more detail for our yeah, next absolutely. meeting. Okay. That'd be fabulous. Thank you. That'd make it a lot easier for us to follow. And I think the diagram, yeah, I might come up with one similar to this myself to help with that. All right. Pictures are good. The Probably traffic good. impact, impact <coughs> mitigation. So, you may recall that there was a sent back for further study really by the planning board I think was a revolving fund. So this is something um, where some research has been done by um, our assistant town planner and one of our planning board members um, and John Flynn our town council has reviewed it for the legality of it so it is legal to do. What we're trying to do here is on a large scale project we can ask for traffic mitigation as a a mitigation factor for approving the project. Like there's going to be certain amount of work, it might 
necessitate signalization improvements or some other kind of improvements. But for a smaller project, if you take a few of them, well, one project on its own, probably not large enough to require that kind of mitigation, but if you had a couple or a few of them combined might warrant it. So if there was a contribution to a fund in which those proceeds of that fund, once there were enough together, could be used to make an improvement, uh, that's what we're looking to do. So we had to set up criteria by which you would be, the requirement for making this contribution would be made, and that's what the traffic impact mitigation article is about. Mm -hmm. The one that's the revolving fund is the place to put the funds once uh, the requirement is made to, that they should be paid. Yes, Erin. I'm a little naive in planning board rules and regulations, but I was under the impression that if somebody wanted to do a development in anywhere, they would have to pay for how that would impact the traffic. But they have to, normally what they, we require is that they do a traffic study. Mm -hmm. Traffic study, okay. And then we have the traffic study peer reviewed by uh, another traffic prof engineering professional. But for example, so if there were- So what's the difference? So the difference would be, let's say for example, right now the, we, the town passed zoning related to the Carberry property on Canton Avenue. Yep. And part of that traffic study is likely to include the intersection with Blue Hills Parkway, I mean, uh, Blue, Blue Hill Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. Yep. And if it was deemed that part of the, of the impact of that development was going to make the intersection worse, we could have a requirement because of the, traf of the project being large enough that they have to mitigate that impact by making improvements to that intersection. Right. But on a smaller project, the, the developer, developer, the developer, developer the applicant. Right. You're not asking the citizens to. Oh no. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm no, just no. making sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Again, I would explain that well. Yeah, that. yeah, that's fine. But no, no, it's on. It's on the developer. Yeah. So this, Total. this is just trying to address something yes. where you have smaller projects where you wouldn't. It would be too much to ask of a project to do a major signal, you know, improvement. For example. Cheryl, give us a sense of how you would define a smaller project. We know that that's an enormous project. That's forty acres. This is <laughs> well. What would you so in here, there's some criteria, right? right. So the first paragraph. Ah, okay. Um, so if you're increasing the floor ah, area okay. by ten percent. Right. Ten or more parking spaces, because we were thinking, if you have a use that's, you know, parking space requirements that we have in the zoning code are based on use. So if you have a use that's less, uh, that's more parking intensive for its square footage, mm -hmm. you know, you might want to be able to capture that parking, you know, that's the impact of that project differently. So we wanted to give several different categories by which this would be triggered. I see. Okay. Okay. So like the, what we just voted on to transfer the branch of the library. That would probably qualify. Whoever the developer yeah. would have to, I'm just right. playing yeah. this yeah. out, right? Yeah, yeah. They'd have I think, to pay into this, Yeah, right? I think that's a, that's a decent example. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. probably uh, the Blue Hill Ice. Um, oh yeah, that right. one. Yeah. 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 Projects of that kind of scale where they're, but they're, they're not, Enormous. you know, like the Carberry could be, I think it was 64 units. That's right. a lot different scale yes. than something that's 10 units yes. or 15 units or Chris. Okay, you thank you. Thank you for that. I do have a question. Um, this is a very interesting article. The one question I have is the and or language. So, um, I'm sorry. What page are you on? So, I, so it's a, it shows up a couple times, and I and I and I don't I don't know all of them. But so I'm, right now I'm looking at the carry for the folks in the work committee. The um, carryover paragraph um, from that's mm -hmm. at the top of the yeah, it's traffic. On the top of the page. Yep, yep. See, may require mitigation measures and or a monetary contribution, and then. If you flip a couple pages, say mitigation payments, ah, right. yeah. in lieu of or in addition to, Ooh. and I guess, um, I guess, I guess that concerns me a little bit um, because I can understand the mitigation. I can understand an or. I think I can understand. Okay, we're going to make you do some mitigation, or we're going to make you have a contribution. But the possibility of doing an and um, <laughs> sounds potentially onerous. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm wondering what thought was, why that language specifically, the and, or, was put in as opposed to or. I'll have to get back with you. I mean, could it be termed as a discouragement yes. okay, at some you. point? Well, thank you. I would yeah, think you if you have both of them, that would be, yeah. expand the road and pay money. That would be, that would be, as be onerous as the I right think word. they just yeah. don't want to limit themselves. Well, so, I, I mean, I, I'll need to go back to um, Brian Furs, who drafted this, who did yeah. the research on it, and yeah. ask him about that. Okay. But I know, for example, when something like this might come up in a different kind of application, say like on affordable housing, if you have a requirement where you are 1.4 units, it might be one unit, and then the 0.4 is a contribution. So if there might be some mitigation that you do that's you know not quite yes. uh, the full significance yes. of the dollar value, yep. and the balance gets put into the mitigation fund. So, so if that if that's what this is going for, I think that probably I, I would feel more comfortable if that ends up being clarified yeah. because right now I think that this language ends up going beyond yeah. that. Yeah. Language. Because I'll it's have ex to ask explicitly that, yeah. stated would make it easier because yeah. this can be interpreted as being something that would be uh, discouraging yeah. mitigation, anybody, or contribution, yeah. or some combination who had a legitimate that. project that they wanted to put in and place. it sounds more subjective. It could be subjective yeah. also. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. And so, I will so say that Brian was going to have some additional information on okay. this article for the 5th, so I'll ask him about that. That would be valuable. But if you have other yeah. questions, we can go through them as well, and I can okay. take those back. Okay, that'll be on. helpful. That'll help us as we deliberate going forward. Okay? We're doing well. <laughs> well, the revolving fund was the place to park the money. So, yeah. did you have questions about that? Also, That's what six is. Yes. Okay. Oh, six tax on to five. It does. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And there's no, there's no limit in, in the article in terms of the spending. Do you mean amount, Tom, or do you? Yeah. You, you typically, on a revolving fund, it's, it's set up for a, a, specific, a, a yeah. specific amount to be spent in a, in a specific period of time. So, yeah. So, you uh, well, actually, annually. maybe what it is when, when they ch when when they did the moderniz the modernization, the state did, they made these um, revolving funds become bylaws. So it may be that you set the dollar amount annually you in the budget as a line item. Yeah. Mm. I can ask if there's a, yeah. a value that would be. Uh, spending Doug, what'd you just say? And then it what? The total amount to be spent is, is instead of yeah. in statute, is set as a budgetary item, a line item, each year annually. So we would agree the revolving fund could spend up to X. $100,000. And, and up, yeah. up to about year. two years ago, it used to be yeah. the or, whole thing, the, the revolving fund was renewed yeah. every single year, yeah. not the amount. Now it's you write a bylaw that establishes a revolving fund, and you don't vote on that again. Mm -hmm. All you vote on is the amount the of money that can be spent out of it. Tries to make it easier. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have to find out about that. Back or raise it, right. depending on how much is raised in funds. But Thank before, you for that, gentlemen. do you mind if I just uh, add one thing here? Um, we do have clarification that the requirement for these is that the expenditure be in the locale in which the mitigation mm -hmm. is needed so in other words yeah. you have the projects going on in East Milton Square you're not spending the money out in Canton Ave for example mm -hmm. so there is that restriction we, we know yeah. that yeah well if I may I say something about that mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so being the non-attorney here oh. <laughs> so so what so well, the first that, sense of that, second that anticipates something that I was gonna say so Number one, the, so the language about the, the limitations on spending in Article 6 tracks the language and limitations on spending in 5. So mm -hmm. just as a matter of convenience, I might suggest if it's possible um, to do so um, because it's not expanding the article, that it simply say as, um, as indicated in Article 5 because to the extent yep. that there is any future amendment, it's just easier, I think, to amend Article 5 as opposed to 6. That, that's one, just Sorry, something for people to get. You have to amend both. Is, then then in the future. You, you have a problem with that, though, because th this is not going to be Article 5. It's going to be some zone. Oh, you're right. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good that. point. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, then forget that. But on what, on what you just said, the locale, um, can you point me what language yeah, is yeah. limited to the locale? I see the purposes, but I don't see the locale geographical limitation, and maybe I'm just missing it. I do not have this committed to memory, so I'm going to have to find it, or I'll get back to you with it. Okay. All right? Well, 
Is may I just um, follow up to that? Is is the um, is there a determination that you'd like to keep the funds in the area where the work is the mitigation is happening, but there are other traffic studies across the town that may need funding, and this might be a way to fund those other traffic yeah, studies. It might be better not to have the geographic. My understanding uh, is yes. by law you can't. By law, when that what allows this to to happen allows this kind of mitigation <coughs> is that it must be spent in that area. That's my understanding. We can get John uh, Flynn, yeah. town council, to confirm. Uh, that's what's been explained to us. I want you to know the non-lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Um, can't explain it any better than that. But if you'd like further, okay. Yeah, but, but just from your just opinion, <coughs> when you think that there might be a, a time where dollars are needed to do a traffic study elsewhere, that there is no work or locale, and the town doesn't have the money to do it, but this would be a fund that you could use those dollars. I just if it's think within, it, yeah, I mean, I mean, without the, the the restriction of the locale, it's just you know looking kind of for the whole, looking out for the whole town. But well, you're taking money from a specific developer on a specific parcel of land, yeah. Yeah, and you're utilizing that developer's money to mm -hmm. do other things. Yep. Yeah. But it, but the, just, the the locale might be just a mile down the street. <laughs> you know, um, so <laughs> we. How you define it. It depends yeah. on how they define locale. Yeah. Let's keep going. Okay. So. Article 7 is complicated. Thanks, George. No, yeah, it's very complicated. It overlays. So, so the Brook Road overlay. Oh. <laughs> don't even matter. It's very complicated. <laughs> yeah. So the Brook Road overlay is a new section. Um, what part of it's town are we the about? abandoned KFC property right. at Brook and Laurel. So if you know the food mart, kind of set back. Blue Hill Parkway, where Blue Hill Parkway, yeah, there's a little jet there there's with the food KFC mart. There's an old KFC hall yeah. there. There's an old. Oh, that KFC hall, yeah. not an actual KFC. No. Yeah. Knights, no of Columbus. Knights of Columbus. Not right. right. I'm sorry, right. I thought of that. Not KFC, no. <laughs> 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 and I'm going, when did we ever have a KFC? I don't know why it's the KFC. The old Knights of Columbus oh, okay. hall. But okay, edit right. that part out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry. So there are, sorry, I, again, I can bring to you if you would like next time, but this is that building. And then there's this abandoned residential building here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. And that's a parcel. Then there's Because that's Thatcher, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Thatcher and then Laurel. Right. Mm -hmm. So the neighbors here, um, a lot of them expressed interest at our meetings about uh, enabling something to happen on this site. Um, it's one of those pre-existing non-conforming uses which become challenging when the underlying zoning is a little challenging yeah. for people to meet. This property's frontage is on this difficult intersection. This zoning would basically require the, two, the, par the property owner here or the property owner here to acquire one another's parcels to be large enough to make this happen and to have frontage along Laurel Street. Okay. Wait, that's Laurel? Here. And that's Thatcher. Thatcher. Mm -hmm. that's okay, Thatcher. thank you. So there was some discussion about the other pre-existing non-conforming retail and auto uses. Right. Those are not in here at this time because the planning board feels as if additional study is required. Mm -hmm. But we've heard enough support to, uh, to address the dilapidated structures that we felt it was important and people supported us coming forward with this. Is there a developer in hand for this? Or? There's a developer who owns this. Okay, a developer does own that already. And oh, they own it. The one. Yes. The it one, but not the one. And shut who down. owns that, bl that brown building behind it? This is a church behind it. That's, that's a Parkway Methodist. That's a church. Yeah. Park and that's my this. mechanic right there. Right here? Uh-huh. Okay, uh -huh. just making sure everybody's aware. Okay. He's not going anywhere. Thank you. For the moment. So, please, no. So what this zoning would do would enable, if the properties are combined, basically uh -huh. under common ownership, and because the frontage would be required along Laurel, to put six townhouses in multiple buildings, so not one big yep. uninterrupted building. Okay. Um, and then there's just stipulations about how that would have to work. Right, exactly. And a lot of this language is similar to language we have elsewhere yeah. um, when we allow this kind of development. What is the time frame for that, Cheryl? This 
acquisition, exchange, consolidation? Well, you know, oftentimes um, it's the underlying <coughs> zoning that sort of frees up the opportunity, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So when this zoning passes, it will, if it passes, passes and it goes through, uh, that it, it hopefully would provide incentive yes. for the property owner mm -hmm. to acquire the yeah. property and move forward. Tom, question? Um, did the plan board consider it all? I, I understand why the PUD has only taken those two parcels, but um, but by doing that, you run the risk of reducing the utility of the other two parcels where they could be okay. potentially, if they, were, if they were all included in the PUD, whether they used or not, at least the, the option there of building something more robust. Well, the thought is that we could work through some additional process and potentially amend the PUD to add, to add those parcels in the future. Um, but it might be that it be a separate PUD also, which allows a little different use mm. because the the retail use may not want to continue down Laurel Street, where the retail use may want to stay on the corner. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the thing where the it becomes a little more. It's a tricky, yeah. Complicated. Yeah. The parking requirements for the commercial uses are, you know. Um, pretty demanding if you will in terms of how much land area they take up yep. so it it does uh, require some further study but okay. what uh, would the total acreage be if consolidated it's um, it's about it just over the 20,000 square foot okay. requirement that's just what I over to get to. yeah okay that's what I thought mm -hmm. okay um, I think this one will require us to devote a little bit of time to reading it through, so 100%. I'm grateful for that overview, but let's continue on. To I have one question. I'm sorry. Oh, please, go ahead. One question. So I see here you have two bedrooms. They're trying to build two bedroom mm -hmm. houses. Uh, is it one bathroom as well? I don't think we restrict that. What do you, what uh, type of... Um, just the clientele or, or tenants or buyers are you residents residents are you trying to get you know, with that restriction well um you know, are you thinking the family's going to be able to live in that the so are you trying to look at the exact language which number are you looking at uh, three there? number three, <laughs> number three? yes yeah. three but there is a developer that was interested in developing this and exactly that that's not zoned residential. Yeah. Is that zoned residential right there? Which yes. One? It is? Mm -hmm. Even though there's, mm -hmm. I, I'm just. I, I, well, that's, uh, sorry, I'll come back to that. But on the, um, what we're saying is not, no more than two bedrooms and not to exceed 1,400 square feet. So what we're doing is, is, is setting the, um, um, a size which, if there's six of them, would be reasonable on this site. So, um, you know, somebody could come back and, um, you know, it says not more than six townhouses, so they could come back with something different than six if they chose to. Four, um, three, you mean, and, sorry? You mean different than, you mean less, less than, than six? Yes. Right. So, normally what the zoning is, is not a, a prescription that this is what you have to come forth with. It's a limitation. It, it's a limitation, and then the developer can come back with a project within that limitation. Which needs to be economic for his interest. Right. So, right. Um, I'm just so worried, you know, you're squeezing out families, and then it's just yeah, yeah, condos. Yeah. Right. And, right. Know, there's no, there's no displacement um, right. on this. No, no, no. no. Yeah. People that can afford it is what I'm, what I'm talking about. You know, so are you going to have any affordable housing in this? So in this, we're requiring um, contribution um, to the affordable yeah. housing um, trust. Yeah. So a contribution, but not that ten percent of it or one unit of it will be affordable housing. Right, because you're looking at six units, and ten percent would be 0. 0.6. Yeah, and so then the economics of these norm. Uh, we've talked about this a lot. We're looking at usually ten units. George. Maybe. Yeah. We're usually looking at 10 units as being something where the project can sustain to build the affordable right. unit. The delta between the affordable unit and the market rate units is quite large, particularly in a for sale situation. So 800 grand in some cases. Yep. Oh, yeah. So that the um, we 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 want to give it an, an opportunity to develop this property, not have it be something that is not a tool, you know, like too restrictive makes it a tool that doesn't get used. So I just have to say, 
I find that what you just said, that sounds extremely offensive. As somebody who um, is lucky enough to live in Milton, I truly believe that we should be expanding that to ensure that all families can live in Milton. And so for you to say that last sentence, which was specifically around the developer and making sure that it's worth their while to develop the property, it's also about how we want our community to be as a whole. Like, and so for me, I, I, I think that, you know, having them give money to a fund, I sat at town meeting last year and I watched everybody applaud that we got six affordable housing units in the town of Milton. And to be honest with all of you sitting here, that's offensive, that we only got six units out of the entire town and everything that we are putting forth. And so not everybody's medium income is six figures. And in fact, it takes multiple six figures to live in this town. And that is not something that I think that we should continue to strive for. I think we need to be as inclusive as we can be. And so for me, moving forward, I would really appreciate it if, if the zoning board would take into consideration how this looks as a community as a whole and what we're doing for folks that cannot afford to live in a six-figure home. So if I may, the planning board basically is working on zoning. The Board of Selectmen is working on an overall plan for achieving affordable housing in the town. So the zoning has so to... So we're siloed. Well, we, in some ways we have to be because the zoning, um, if we said a, 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 a private developer is required to satisfy our affordable housing requirements, the private developer has to have a way for that to make sense financially. Yes. And the, the market, the, the way that, nothing or nobody's going to build anything, you won't have any houses. And then happen. if there's a federal law that's passed that says that 30% of your income should only go towards rental assistance, which has been proposed. I mean, it's just something but that we need to think about. And I just wanted for them to raise it. It doesn't mean build that I'm going to Chair them. reserves the right now to take this from <laughs> yeah. the... Uh, the atmosphere of metaphysics back to what we really yeah. have to discuss tonight, it's which is the last the two articles. articles. Okay. I don't disagree with the, 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 the I'm not going to pass judgment on the on the merits of any argument. It's just the question right now. Let's concentrate on what we have and the philosophical discussions we can leave for another time. Please. Not a follow up to that discussion. I, I had, was there any thought to um, <clears throat> commercial use on the, on the property on the space? I mean, we talk about the need to increase the tax base. There's already a couple of um, commercial spots there in that area. Mm -hmm. Can we increase it, get a commercial tenant, do something with that space? We, uh, the planning board had um, a meeting at the Tucker School, one of our meetings where we uh, did a lot of outreach to invite people who live in that area to provide us feedback. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, there, there was a lot of varied discussion about the, whether additional commercial would bring further traffic. As many people know, that intersection is a, a, a difficult yeah. intersection. And the commercial use, there was some concern about the traffic impact that would have additional commercial use, particularly for the residential, the residential mm -hmm. um, owners on, or <clears throat> even non-owners but people who live there about that how that it's going to make their day-to-day -day life and then there were even concerns about what that does for pedestrians and what that does for bicyclists and so uh, again the planning board um, felt as if proceeding with the residential for this portion and coming back to the two that have the historical use of the commercial mm -hmm. would be a way to um, make some progress on this instead of um, holding up the one for the other, which is going to take more time. Well, the Knights of Columbus Hall, is, is that considered not-for-profit as it, as it stands now? Well, it's owned by, it was sold, so okay. it's owned by a the, private... So it is, it's on the tax rolls now? It, yes, yes, and it's been vacant, I think, four years in its oh. current state, at least. Okay. Can I just so, clarify one thing, please? please? Um, that, that question, I was talking, I wasn't talking about affordable housing, I was talking about making it affordable like if you just built two property or two homes there or a big mansion it's only going to be one type of people that can mm -hmm. you know afford that and if you just make um, this 1400 square foot only two uh, bedrooms then you're not really going to get families there you probably get people that 
are just professionals that's going to Boston, and you can still charge them. I mean, right now that would be like seven hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, opposed to mm-hmm. even more. So that's what I was really pertaining to, not just the affordable housing part of it. No, just making homes that are affordable so people can raise families and actually don't have to and can have a you know, stronger uh, mm-hmm. quality of life. That's all. One, well, one of the things I think about the sizes is the let, to allow the sizes and, and to require the sizes is to be smaller is that the purchase price would be lower um, so if you I mean if your suggestion is for the planning board to consider whether the two bedrooms and the 1400 square feet is something we should reconsider I can take that back to the board I would, yeah, I would think you know, that, that was a contribution to the affordable housing trust in lieu of what was that I think it might be better if we discussed rather the amount of being contributed to the affordable housing trust mm-hmm. in lieu of building the properties. I was would and didn't like the small amount that the developer would pay in lieu of it. Rather than right. but I also get developers have to be able to build I, I stuff. I get that so. too. It's just a shame. But we can table those discussions. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for your indulgence. No. <laughs> There's no monopoly on opinion. Can I ask a follow up to Kevin's question earlier? How many people came to the meeting? from the, the area, just out of curiosity, not judging, literally just curious. I don't have the count. The planning, uh, the planning department has the count, but the library was standing room only, so it was yeah. full. Wow. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. that Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Okay, articles 8 and 9 deal with the membership of the planning board and representation uh, to other boards as well. Article 8 is to, what is the current term now of the five board years. member? It's five years. So this shortens it to three. Shortens it to three. There's, um, again, Brian Furs has done research on this. Yep. And there's a combination, I mean, there's a mix in the state uh, of boards that are five and boards that are three. Um, there was a lot of discussion at our meeting, and we anticipate further discussion on this, on the merits of uh, a five or three. But... I can share with you some of the, the thoughts people yes. had. This is interesting. Uh, <clears throat> a five a five year term. Um, we felt as if um, recruitment for people to run when it's five years, because if they've never served on it, they feel like the material might be too technical. It discourages people because it it's a long time. It's a long commitment. Um, it's like a sentence rather than a term. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the turnover of one per year, you know, uh, when you get the, the five-year term. So if you have three, you'll have a little bit more turnover. So that might be a good thing. We had, right now, the five members are all in their first term. Uh, we had times in the past where people had served for five terms, six terms. Um, and you're not getting as much... Um, Diversity and thought, as you can, you well know here that the, the diversity of thought is a good thing, mm-hmm. um, and so in, in it, it can be hard, um, you know, for people, as you know, again here with young families or a lot of, you know, in the prime of their careers, you know, to, to set aside yeah, the time. Yeah. So it's it's just uh, really about that, um, okay. and uh, again, we were going to uh, Do supply. Do we have any discussion a about that? I mean, we're appointed for one year. I understand that. Um, what is the sense? Pay for performance, huh? Something like that. <laughs> I think shorter is better. I mean, just as, I just as a general term. Yeah. It's, three years, it seems to me, strikes the right balance yeah. between getting people with institutional knowledge, right. but also right. getting people to to turn over, right? Yeah. Five strikes me as very long. Well, yeah. and then if you go for a second term, it's 10 years, mm-hmm. you know, so that's... Oh. Well, versus if you staggered, run right? for a second time, you're kind of asking for it. Yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what I mean is that's that... Good for the town. You don't come yeah, exactly, for punishment yeah. or anything yeah, exactly. like that, right? But these are all staggered. It's not like everybody's going to be at a three-year term. Slowly. Like you're going to have yeah, you, people elected at different times. Right. So you, well, you'll you have the, the continuity. Right. You want the overlap. So, yeah. Many people on that board, right? Well, and some of in in the past, some of our uh, special permits have taken quite some time to get through. We're trying to get that to happen more quickly so that um, we're not well, looking at <laughs> not overlapping and overlapping. Yeah, and yeah, and which come okay. which which really brings me to the the associate one. Yeah, um, is a uh, it's really kind of a challenge because our special permits require four out of five for a special permit to be granted. 
four so, out of five on the, of the committee, a majority of the committee. The, right. Okay. A super majority, and you can only miss one meeting to be able to vote. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. We meet twice a month. Okay. What? And so if people, uh, you can watch one meeting, you know, uh, after or during and, and, um, but that doesn't qualify Does, you to vote if you're not there. But just one of those is Those are your is internal all. rules. No, <coughs> these are not internal rules. This is state law. So these are committed. So uh, the other thing about it is, so for example, when I came in my election, they were had begun a special permit that ended up taking until December of that year. So I was elected in April. I couldn't vote. So they needed the four votes of the remaining members in ah. order for that to be able to pass. And so this it only addresses special permits. And it's for these reasons that I just laid out that we feel as if it gives uh, the planning board, like sometimes now um, we may have to um, uh, continue a hearing purely because we don't have the, the number of people you know, required in order to, so for example, if in the case of the special permit when the year I came on, if mm -hmm. um, they didn't get the four out of five votes or they felt they weren't going to get it, then their uh, alternative for that developer and for the planning board would be to start all over, start with a new application. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so this is the, um, the, the kind of problem we're trying to fix with this, is to allow this associate member, uh, it would only be uh, called in for s during special permit hearings. So, but he uh, would have to be at every single. That person would have to be there, there, not yet knowing whether they would be needed until mm -hmm. maybe somewhere down the road, and maybe not be needed. Mm -hmm. Never doing this. Never <laughs> 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 I do have a question. I do have a question. This was vetted by the by town council. This was reviewed by town council, okay. yes. The only reason I ask is that um, all the other members of the planning board are elected. Mm -hmm. We're all elected. And this, except for this one appointed yes. yeah. member who has voting in this one special yeah. circumstance. Little, which could be critical in some places. Yeah. So there's a lot of discussion about that. So let me tell you that what we discussed was adding language that said such associate member would be present at all such hearings but would only participate if so designated by that, that's the chair not here, though. it's going to be added okay, okay. Be and the reason for that is just what you say that that points that person's appointed and not elected so they would only be able to deliberate this is going to be at change so it's not in here okay. now only be able to deliberate should the vacancy of you know so of, let's say somebody's ill for example right and misses more than two meetings then that person gets designated by the chair to be the one who would be sitting for that special permit and at only at that point could they deliberate so procedurally when will that be uh, that language be added so that we can review for it? the fifth we'll, we'll see it for the fifth okay yes. a, a little before that would be yeah. helpful too it's, so we yes can it's read well it the uh, yeah. town, town council is working on it okay and i asked him yeah. to have it to us before the meeting perfect yeah How as much soon as we get it because because yeah. we, we we will be even under some pressure to do all of these and some have some complexity okay so. And then I just want to let you know that we will be holding a public hearing on all of these articles on uh, September 13th. And we will also be holding uh, a public hearing on the planning board portion of the selectmen's article that deals with the term selectmen and chairman. Because the there are references on the to time. those in on the 13th. On the 13th. Because okay. we're required to to per town council to hold a public hearing on that we're required to hold public hearings on all of the articles but uh, because that's changing that article changes the zoning bylaw our portion of the public hearing only addresses the zoning bylaw portion of that and where is that being held here we have to advertise those two consecutive weeks and that's why we couldn't hold it sooner we had to wait for the Board of Selectmen to, to accept the articles. So, what, the, our time so, so when will the two hearings be? The 13th? 13th. Or? We're going to, that's. Oh, yeah, okay. Around. That's my earlier question about priority. Right? Four, five, six, okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Thank you all. Thank See you. 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 Yeah. It has to be different than the very beginning. Right. 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 Thanks. He's going to have to sit there. Right. 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 Right.
forgot. Not old that's good. Good job. Good job. You know, it could be the runner up in the election. Well, they do have to be. They do have to be. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know why it cracks. Okay. We have. Um, <laughs> Can we come to order just, just for the last couple of things here? Yes. We will need to meet on the 5th and go through a number of these articles. Unfortunately, we will have to start drafting before the, the uh, planning board has completed its deliberations on these, which is half of the articles. So we are caught in a little bit of a bind because we have to have final corrections, final corrections by October 1st to the printer. And as Lynn just pointed out, uh, final corrections are a lot different than leaving large pieces of our recommendation and rationale out. They're yes. voting on their final languages on the 5th. No. No, the, no, well, no. the public council. They, can't they, can't they, can't really have, they really the can't change it until the public council. They're hearing. voting theirs. Right. On what date did The 13th. So no, she didn't say that. She just said she was holding a public, public hearing. hearing. Oh. So uh, they they can't they can't they afterwards. So we have, we have a little bit of a challenge. I'm going to have to yes, do a little negotiating with the town administrator or the selectman or somebody to see how we can fi fix this problem because the, the, the mismatch between the deadlines and the public hearings is, is going to be difficult to reconcile. And I don't want to fool anybody. These, these are not simple. No. Uh, and they're complex. To, to discuss and probably even more complex to articulate in recommendations and rationale. So as I've said, I don't want to do a poor job. We won't do a poor job and we're not going to you know, do a slipshod um, uh, uh, manner, we treat this in a slipshod manner for the yeah. town's business. I mean, don't be too concerned with coming out with green sheets, you know, on town meeting, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's common. It's, it, it's, it's just a fact of life. Understood. But yeah. for the green sheets for nine articles is a lot. It's a lot. Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes. So out of the take the nine articles off the table, is what she just informed us is that we can't even move forward on article sixteen because they have to vote? That's a prior? good question. I don't know. So what I'm trying to figure out is out of the remaining articles, I'm some gonna, of those yeah. we've already yes. approved, so yes. we can already start putting them in the can. Exactly right. So, Mr. Chair, I, I'm just trying to figure out exactly how we start tackling what is in front of us. And if there's anything on this list that maybe on September 5th we could take a formal vote yeah. to do. There are a few that we yeah. can take some of vote. Yes. As I understand it, what we've already voted on affects the general bylaws. She needs to do the same for where it references Board of Selectmen in the zoning bylaws, which we haven't done. Right. So, so ours, I think, I'm sorry, is, I don't understand that. Doesn't. There are two sets. The zoning bylaws and the general bylaws. We've changed the general bylaws. But she has to go zoning. change the zoning. So we have another, another so they, article. So in order to get that other half of bylaws, the planning board has to go through an article and then we. It would be added. I, I think so it's incorporated. That. No, it would is be. It, it would I think not, it's incorporated. That it, it would likely be incorporated. Is it? It would likely be. Incorporated. Hopefully, it should already be. But it would likely be incorporated. Hopefully, it is. But they've changed. But anyway, the, one, the, question, the, the question at hand, the question at hand. No, yeah. we can still make a recommendation. So can we start The chair is going to reserve the, the, the authority now to just ask you all to be still so I okay. can get through this. Sorry. Thank you. The question was asked, how many of these have we voted on and can we vote on? I would argue that we have already voted on the discharge of the library committee, which is Article 13. I yes. think with a small question to John Flynn, we can talk about Article 14 and vote on that when the transfer of the Kidder branch. Article 15, the Chief Financial Officer, we have discussed. We're going to wait for comments from the Town Administrator and the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, who is coming next Wednesday. I think we can vote on that. We have already voted on Article 16. I think we can vote on Article 10 uh, for Chief King uh, to appoint the retired police officers. Um, so we can we can we can vote we can have uh, at least six uh, article 17 I still need clarification as to how we have to proceed on that one and article 12 the plastic bag that one we can talk about when when the, um, on the chair fifth. of the on the fifth when okay. the chair of the board comes uh, and gives us the information that we okay, need for cool. that plus we've also gotten those already so we can review oh, yeah. them uh, right. in time so so we do have homework to do for our next meeting okay. to, 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 answer, to answer the question the the, the zoning part is in fact, in Article There's 16. There's a clause in there that does it. It's in. Okay. So, That's That's so easy. there's nothing that precludes us from making a recommendation on even the planning board. If you wanted to, it's dangerous 
Because yeah. <laughs> you don't know. Because the language will change. Right. And they still um, don't but but yeah. most likely on 16, nothing's going to change. Right. So, you know, you could go out on a limb on, on 16 and, yeah. and make a So we can probably start. So I'm, I'm going to ask if any of you have ideas about this. I, I think we can do this to split up the duties of drafting the rationales and the recommendations for these that we've already voted on um, and to put those together so we can at least get a head start on those so that we're not going to be pressed against the wall doing 16, 17 of these and we can we, we have a fighting chance of getting through nine if we are really pushed against the wall. Carol, to do this. Okay. I will too. Okay, that's fine. I will talk about this. Uh, if you have an idea of what you'd like to write about, think about it. We don't have to decide now. So just uh, the, the comment it. portion, I think. The comment, yeah, because the, the articles are already done. We got the we got the text. Yeah. We're just working through that now. But the uh, the actual, and I'll draft the the opening as, as well as I can. I'll start that already. But I think that we we. We, we may be able to pull this rabbit out of the hat. We may be able to. <laughs> That's what um, it may be that we have a few green sheets, but I would suggest that before the next meeting, just please go through these. If you have questions, prepare them beforehand uh, so that when the um, uh, town officials come, we can just get them through and limit cross-discussion so that we can get these answers done and vote these and, and do the best we can with what we have. So uh, with that in mind, uh, uh, if there's no new business, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn to our meeting on the fifth meet, we meet the fifth of, sit, fifth of September at seven o'clock. It's a good thing I have a large family. <laughs> I'm used to this. But can I just, well, well, we got a good sized crowd here. Um, <laughs> Because October will be here pretty soon, yeah. uh, and the um, oh. if anybody's going to the um, oh, that's right. When is that, Tom? It's usually the, the first what? week in October. First weekend in October. This about. is the, um, the municipal uh, it, yeah. training. Uh, uh, it's the uh, what do they call it? It's the Mass <laughs> Municipal um, Association of Mass Town Finance Committee's that's annual it. meeting. Thank you. Um, the first weekend in October. Like a joy. Oh, it's great. No, I'm it's, sure it's a fun time. I mean, if you want to learn something. Is it in it's Framingham? No, it's, uh, it's usually in, um, it's yeah, usually at the. Uh, uh, Worcester? No, uh, uh, Franklin. At yeah. the. Um, Franklin? At the Tri County. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Uh, regional. Yeah. Okay, cool. And will somebody be sending that out to yeah. the entire committee so we can When we get in the our... information, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Someone? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Good job, everybody.